Right, so in this video, I actually want to address something from the last video that I did. So if you haven't watched my last video, which you should, uh, I did a video on concurrency in Flutter where I basically show you how to run multiple asynchronous requests at once. And I show you the example for that. And on that video, I have gotten a comment that said something about error handling. Now, I cannot find that comment. It seems that the author has decided to delete it. But yeah, I also replied to them and I said that I will be doing a video on that. So in short, the commenter asked if something goes wrong in one or the other function, basically if an error gets thrown, does that mean that everything fails? And in short, that's true. So if, for example, this method threw an exception for whatever reason, then we wouldn't be able to get the results from this method. We would just get an error for this entire future and that would be the end of it. Now, there are a couple of ways to, to try and fix this, but let me actually show you what I mean by this. So instead of having this HTTP get right here, I'm going to comment this code out and I'm going to comment this line out. And I'm going to make my own future, which is just going to throw an error. So future error. Again, if you haven't watched my last video, this won't really make a lot of sense. So go and check that out. And also, if you're not familiar with futures, check my video on that. The link will be in the cards. So I'll make a future real quick that throws an error. So we'll make it async, we'll make it return a future. And let's just say throw new exception. And let's just say my error, right? So now if we execute this fetch data method, it's basically going to try to execute both of these futures. And when this one throws an error, it will throw an error for, for all of these. So let me actually print the result for the second one, just so you see what I'm talking about. Actually, results of one. So let me save that. So I'm going to put a breakpoint so we can track the changes in the code. I'll say restart. And here we hit the breakpoint. So we're going to show the loading. And now it's going to try to execute both of the futures. And if everything goes well, it should jump to this line. But since we know that this is going to throw an error, it's just going to exit the function with an error. So if I press F10 now, it has caught the exception and it says exception my error. So what has happened here is we got this exception and we're not able to get this result, even though this one would have executed successfully because this one threw an error. So if I go F5, as you see, it exits the function and that's it. Nothing is printed to the console. And I think even, yeah, the app crashed completely. So how are we going to mitigate this issue? So you have a couple of options. If you're using this future.wait where you have multiple futures, first thing you can do is very simply in your future, in your method that you expect an error to pop up, you can just say try and then catch exception. And that's pretty much it. Uh, if we're returning some kind of a result here, we can say result. But if it's an error, we can say return an error, right? Or something like that. And this try catch will fix that issue. It will catch the exception right here and everything will continue to go business as usual. So let's try that. I'm going to run the app again. And we're going to go through the breakpoints once again, just so we can see what's happening. Okay, so the app is launching. We should hit the breakpoint pretty, pretty soon. So yeah, and I'm also going to put breakpoints here and here. So if everything goes as expected, we should hit this line where our error is caught. So I'm just going to press F5. And yes, here we caught the error. And it, here we have the details about the error, it says message my error, and that's all good. And this function is now going to execute successfully because we wrapped the error we have in a try catch block. So now when we go F10, it's going to finish the function. It's going to go here. And when I press F5, since both of these executed successfully, we should hit this line. 
and that's exactly what happens and now we have access to the results we have the first result which is from this function and we have the second result which is the http response so i'm now going to press f5 and that's pretty much it there are two more ways that i see that we can handle these errors so maybe we do not have to do try catch in here we can just remove that if you have some external future like right here Right here, we cannot go into the get function and put a try catch. But what you can do is put the entire future dot wait statement in a try catch. So what we're, we can do here is this. And then we can print an error occurred, right? This is also a solution, but not as good as the first one because we're getting to the same thing if one thing fails in any of these the entire future fails and it goes to the catch block so this will prevent your app from having an unhandled exception which you should always handle your exceptions but you still won't be able to access all the successful results so let me demonstrate what i mean so i'm going to put three breakpoints one for the start of the function one for the printing of the one result that we know is going to be successful and the catch block of an error occurred so i'm going to restart the app once again so we're going to hit that breakpoint okay so we're at the start press f10 it's going to declare the futures and try to do the request and when we press f10 now i'm going to hit the catch block because one of these failed and this is the issue with this method if if you just want to have a potential exception handled this is a good thing to do but if you want to access the successful results then this is not going to be good okay and there's one last way that i see that we can figure this out so let's say we have this one this http.get and we expect it to fail sometimes but we still want all of the other successful http.gets we want all of those results so how are we going to handle that we cannot simply go into the get method right here because this is directly in a library and we cannot modify the library at least not directly so what we can do is wrap everything in a try catch just like we did now but then we won't be able to get all of the successful requests. One thing that we can do is we can cut this and put this into a separate function. Let's say get comments, say await, make this method async. Then we can wrap all of this in a try catch method. And this will be good enough. And then we just call the get comments future here and this would do it but if you have something kind of short kind of simple it's going to be kind of tedious to create a function for every single thing that could potentially fail but this is a valid solution right but there is something that is even better so let me just control z my way back to this we can just add a dot catch error method here and this is going to let us access all of the successful results because the error is going to be handled here, but all of the other results are going to be present. And also you can return something here and that will be handled as a result. So by what I see, this is the best way. So let's just replace this with a method that we know is going to throw an exception. Let's put a breakpoint here and let's also have the, that breakpoint here just so we know if we're going to get one of the successful results. So actually, let me print out both, both of the results so you can see what we get when we have this type of syntax. So let me save. Then I'm going to restart the whole app. And now we hit the loading breakpoint. We can skip that. And I'm going to press F5. And as you can see, here we are. Dot catch error method managed to catch this error. And it said E. And yeah, that's exactly the error that we threw over here. So now instead of getting whatever the result is from this function, it's going to replace that result with this error string. This can be whatever. It can be an object, a, a string, an integer, whatever you want it to be. So, and it's going to replace it with that. And when we print everything out, the 
first one is going to be the result from the HTTP request. And the second one is going to be whatever we return in the catch error method. So when I press F5, results, the first one is a response and the second one is error. And that error comes from here. So when I press F5 and F5, it's all good. Our app runs. All of the exceptions were handled. So yeah. And yeah, here are our results printed out. And yeah, that's pretty much it for handling errors in futures. If you found something valuable in this video, like the video, subscribe to my channel because there's going to be more interesting content on Flutter and these types of tips and tricks. So yeah, subscribe to the channel, like the video. Bye.